We uh, basically just bring our streamliner. What's well, exactly the same process as we do down at the basin when we have a streamliner. And we back to a dirt berm in between our bog and our stream. And now I bring the streamliner up underneath and the bog liner up. This has to come up above water level. Water level is about right here. So up and over. Our bog liner comes down side and boom now water coming over here will run down in here it can get in between these two pieces of liner but it would have to come up and over before it creates a leak um, the only tricky part is now on on the edges here um, so say we set the framing border right in here and then I want to bring this liner up against and we've explained the gravel uh, pocket concept before yeah. but basically that's what happens so our boulder gets set here and then we'll bring this liner up like this and a pocket of gravel goes in between the boulder and I can show you better once that boulder is set in but um, we'll, we'll catch up on that later. What I'm thinking Weston, I know we had talked about putting that spillway here earlier, that second spillway. I was thinking about doing that anyway. Well, I, I'm not opposed to that um, but I think I know what you're going to say. This rock needs to go in like this. Yeah. So. I can picture a, a spillway rock in between these two ends and then bring that second spillway over on this side and get, I'm not exactly sure, I almost have to set it in, but I'm thinking I can get water coming in on this angle and spilling out underneath this, this jutting rock on this angle, smash it into there, set another rock right here and spill it out this way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I get it in the fall this way, big pool right here, set a rock here, and then it spills out that way. That sounds gnarly. What do you think? Yeah. So there's, this is how we set boulders. There's a couple uh, tricks and tips that can make it a lot easier for you, especially when you get into these big boulders. If you're setting a smaller one and it's not quite the way you want it, you can always go in there and kind of wrestle the thing around. But strapping and setting these monster boulders, certain things that make it a lot easier. For start, we always like to set our rocks level and we've talked about that in our earlier videos. So I determine what I want top and then if you, if you can possibly strap, this rock has a real nice opportunity to get my strap out because if I put them on the bottom like this, it's gonna pinch and it's gonna be bare to get out. Not every rock works this way, but I have a nice little overlap here. So this rock, this is gonna be easy to unstrap then. But find your center point, your center of weight, and that's gonna be where you want this to clinch so that it picks up nice. What, is, what do you call that, like a choke point? Yeah, the choke point, the center point of the rock, the heaviest, sometimes they're a little hard to tell because they're thick on one end and thin on the other, but you want to find that center of gravity, I think it's called, yeah. right? It is totally worth it to fight that boulder. When you're strapping it out there, make sure that thing's picking up dead level because when you bring one in that's kind of like, eh, it's not very level, that, especially if it's a spillway rock or something like that, that can be a nightmare to try to get that thing level because your rock's coming in like this and then you put a shim underneath here and then it sets up on that shim and then the thing is that ends up moving six inches or fight the battle out there get it level that way when you swing it in it's so much easier to set it so this i'm real happy first try on this one actually <laughs> that's what happens when you get good you, you get there after a while <laughs> this one is strapped in such a matter that it's completely level this is the way i want to set it when i bring it in there and then if you have big rocks if you set them on a couple of shims you usually don't but that makes it so that you can get that strap out underneath and I'll show you that when we come to set it. So there's two things that we're looking for when I when I that I use shims for. What's if a I, shim? This is this is a shim. That's a shim. It's native foraging from the oh, excavation. I see. But what I use them for is oftentimes when I set that thing, even though I did a perfect strap job, I, I end up saying, oh, this end should be a little bit higher. And so I'll yell at the excavator operator to bring it up a little bit and I'll stick that thing in there until I get the seams and the rock right, the top is level, 
And also, even if I don't need to do that, I use them anyway, because once I have that couple ton rock set in there, I can just, it leaves a gap between the bottom of the pond and my boulder, and when I'm done, I can easily get my strap out. Easily being the key word. We never struggle getting straps out. It's never a problem. I have not cut straps because they were too hard to get out. I wouldn't do that. So it's not exactly stable and we're fighting this strap. It's kind of in the center of the rock, which is gonna make it really hard to get back out. Okay. That strap's gonna be really hard to get out. I almost think we should just restrap it because it's gonna bury the strap. I was trying to strap it with to get it loose, but I can't. Ah, yeah. Well, actually right now it does look like it's, and it's a little soft underneath. I think we'll be all right. Let's try it. Yeah. Okay, so well, here's what we need to do. Go up. So that is how you set a boulder. Now, the only thing left is getting the strap out, which is the easy part. No use videoing that. Okay, it's, so it's, one of the things that I made a mistake on when I was strapping this, and that I forgot to mention to you is, if you can possibly keep your strap corners, this one's easy, as far to the edge of the boulder as possible, it makes it easier for you to unstrap. So for instance, take this rock, if I had both of my straps coming up here and here, here, here. I'd have to, both of your straps coming up where? Here and here, mm -hmm. I would have to bring them all the way through here. Whereas if I just so have them gripping here and here, would be so much easier for it to unstrap. Yeah. And that's kind of, if, if my strap would be here instead of here, yes, I, it would rare. be loose. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's one thing to keep in mind. When you stand back and look at this thing, it's level side to side. That has to be level. And that looks level. Yeah. So this obviously if you'd set a level on it wouldn't be level, but the eye, to the eye it looks yeah, level. Yeah, it's still that whole rock grew into the yep. bank. Yep. this way. I think it looks good. It's not leaning back. It's not leaning front. Yeah. Side to side looks good. These seams match. Oh! Came right out. And that is why you use shims. If we wouldn't use shims, that strap would be solidly stuck in there. Wowee. And that is how you do it. So this is a perfect example of how you strap a boulder. The strap is all the way out at the corners, which makes it super easy to get the strap out once the boulder is set. The boulder is level, and that's what Ben was talking about. So what we're doing there, and this happens quite often when you're setting boulders, is um, we brought the boulder in and we're like, uh, we need to flip the liner forward and do a little bit of excavation so the boulder sets how we want it. We don't let the excavation tell us how the boulder needs to be set. We will excavate and re-excavate until the boulder set how we want it to set. This is a kind of unique situation. I will often just excavate a huge yeah. pad. Yeah. And then that over it, over yeah, it. So that way I can set whatever I want and then fold in the liner yeah. and the back of it.
probably a bigger moment for me than the homeowner sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true. Are you ready for this? Plug it in. I'm ready. All right, let's go. Okay. Got lots of water coming out of that one. That is cool. Look at that. That is so cool. Hey, it's starting to break down here. That is cool. <laughs> Dude, look at that. That is cool. So what do you say? You just got uh, water escaped and you got YouTube. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Did you pick out a favorite part yet? Is that going to take a while? That's going to take a while. <laughs> Any buyer's remorse yet? No buyer's remorse. <laughs> well, I guess we need to shut it down. We have a couple of little deep foaming things to fix up and some edge work to do. We ran out of foam yesterday and we didn't get to foam off the pond in between those, or the pool in between those bubbling rocks. But there's so many things that turned out so awesome that I'm not sure which one is my favorite. As awesome as the fall, but this one has some really cool, uh, I like the current in it, especially up here where you can just see and down there, that just look super naturalistic to me. So I'm very happy how that turned out. The goal for today is, I'm not sure how realistic it is, but I'd like to get a couple landscape orders set, get all our planting done, all the edge work done, all the detail work, and then get everything done but a couple of the details that we can stop in tomorrow morning on the way out to the next project, which is uh, for the same client just at a bank out in Pittsburgh. So we're headed out this way anyway. We'll stop in tomorrow morning and catch up any of those detail work. Detail uh, work. Detail, detail work. Detail work. <laughs> catch up any of those loose ends before we go out. Let's get some plants and some mulch in here. That'll look beautiful.